Hey there, as always, this is sponsored by Freely Give. Freely Give uh, pays my salary to contribute to the community in terms of AI. If you ever need help with AI and Drupal, that combination, we are experts. And it's not just me, there's other consultants as well that knows this uh, field inside out. So please contact us if you need help with uh, anything for your enterprise or, or paid solutions. Today I'm going to talk about something else than the AI inter interpolator. I'm going to talk about a completely new module that has been in the planning for a couple of weeks. So a lot of the people from the AI community came together basically uh, with the idea to create a foundational module for Drupal. And this is something I wish existed when I was doing the AI interpolator. I have like created an abstraction layer in the AI interpolator, but it's still very much just for the AI interpolator. So what this is going to be is uh, first and maybe most important, a foundation and abstraction layer for all possible AI providers, for all possible types of calls you can do for AI. The video I'm going to show today has it's actually very different from everything else I show. Usually I show something that anyone should be able to set up without knowing development. Today I'm just going to talk to developers. So I'm going to showcase why you should use this when you're either working privately with AI and Drupal or when you're creating a contributed module and why you should uh, rely on us. So uh, if you install these, well, well, I will also say two things about the module. AI interpolator is going to be built in here. So it's going to be renamed to AI automators and it's going to be the version two. Uh, also, what I'm talking about today, the abstraction layer, that all comes from the brain of uh, Michael Gov. So th this guy, SEO Gov, that created the LLM abstraction layer that is now deprecated that has gone into the AI and I have just tried to uh, add a lot of features on top of it. So that's what I've been working on the last week. So that's what I'm going to showcase. So now if you get this uh, module and search for AI, there's going to be a lot of modules, but what's important is this one, AI Core. So that's what you need to be able to use this layer I'm going to talk about today. Then of course you need some kind of provider, so you need to work against some service. As you can see it already comes with a lot of providers that you can use. Uh, both uh, like services like OpenAI or like model catalogs like Hugging Face, but also uh, LM Studio and Olama that you can actually host locally or set up on a server. So you can make sure that your prompts never leaves your company network. Um, so you just need to install one of those uh, to get going with this. There's small documentation here or a little documentation. I haven't written enough. There's going to come more documentation soon. Um, so uh, what I want to showcase in this case, oh, sorry about the image here, but this is actually connected to what I want to showcase. So this is the normal article in, uh, in uh, um, Drupal. You install the Drupal standard installation I've added one field called the image prompt and what I want to do in this uh, case is that I want to uh, ask via prompt about um, basically ask via prompt uh, to take this article and create an image prompt from that and then take this image prompt and create this image of course you can use AI interpolator you can use augmenter AI to do this uh, but in this case, I want to develop it myself to, to understand what I'm doing. So I have uh, the possibility to write something like this, right? So, uh, the, and we're talking now before the, the AI module existed. So you, you're basically having a, you know, if it's article, create a prompt, you can generate a sentence image and uh, uh, then you have this open AI client, so open AI, it's, it's actually very easy. So I'm taking the easiest route now because this is a very well developed client that exists, right? You have to figure out how you're gonna sideload the API key in a secure manner. Uh, and then you're gonna write this long array that is basically how you're 
uh, creating the first call here. Do the call, make sure you do exceptions if something fails. Then you save this into the field and then you have to start creating the image and exception and then since it's an image you have to create an image entity. I didn't even write all this code because there's so much code that you have to write. And then you have solved it, right? So when you click save, this is gonna go into pre-save and start doing this. But with this new layer, you can do this instead. So it looks like this. Um, so there's a couple of things that's important here. So first of all, we have the AI provider service. So this is always what you reference when you're gonna do an AI call. Um, and then you can uh, basically take this provider create an instance, which is a provider instance, which can be, in this case, OpenAI then. And in this case, we want to make a chat message. So if you if you just make sure that you have um, a good ID, you're gonna be able to autocomplete all these different objects, right? So in this case, we take these messages and say that we want the same thing, GPT-3 to 5 Turbo. You don't necessarily need to add this here. You can set a default model for every type of operation and provider. So you have something default, but for now we say GPT-3 to 5 Turbo and we want this back normalized. So we are basically pushing in normalized values and we're getting normalized uh, values back. Uh, and I will showcase in a minute why this is, but I can also showcase that you can actually do this if you want. So if I copy the messages here, I could instead do this because I know this is OpenAI and I could do get raw here and then it would actually get me the raw response as it is the JSON uh, array that comes from OpenAI. Um, so it is possible to use it that way. You can even do, but I you should not do this, but you can actually do this even. If there is something that the whole abstraction layer can't solve, you can actually do this. You get the OpenAI client. You can't necessarily do that with every provider, but with OpenAI you can do that. So we get this and this returns then a chat message. So this looks exactly like this. It's it's just like DTO objects, right? Uh, that you can connect uh, some values to a, a getter or a setter inside there. So in this case, we create a chat message, we create another one. And in this case, we get the chat message back and then we can do the get message to get the message, right? We just set it into file image prompt. Here's the also nifty thing then. We do another open AI. I'm gonna show you why I'm not reusing it here. Set a configuration similar to how we did here that we just want one. Well, that's actually default. I don't think I have to set that. Uh, I don't think I have to set response format either, but I just wanted to show you that you can set a configuration here, right? Same again, we do a normalized input, send it, say we want all E3, but instead of get the, get raw, which is the response from OpenAI or get normalized, which is a, a file binary. I can have helper functions here, depending on what it is we're trying to create. So there is a get us image reference. There is a get us media reference. There's a get us file reference when we're talking about file fields, for instance, uh, which means in this case, I can do get us image reference. Uh, and this takes just where I should put it. And then it's solved. So if I do this, if we just want to resave, uh, oh, I haven't thought about the alt text. We should probably set that. But uh, if I resave now, you see it takes time because it goes in here again and uh, rewrites the prompt. So you can just see the prompt here, uh, and but it's gonna rewrite that now, right? Uh, and the cool thing then, when this is done, when we say that, okay, this was really bad quality because we don't trust OpenAI or, oh, Fireworks AI, it's so much cheaper or uh, I want Croc because it's so fast. So say that we uh, uh, want to use um, the default mod model from, from Croc instead. Then it's as simple as this. We take away this, write Croc and that's it. So now we're using Croc instead. Same thing here. 
there does only exist currently one image, uh, text to image model, model, but soon Dream Studio is gonna come, so you can do Dream Studio. The configuration might differ, of course. So you, either you just don't give a configuration and have the default values if you really want to make it flexible, but you should probably expose this as a form. I will come to this in another video because we help you with this as well. Uh, and because I've used normalized input and normalized output, I can just swap, hot swap, however I want here, right? Well, if I do Dream Studio, of course, here it should probably like SD3 or I can take the default model as well then. Um, and that is it. That is the reason why you should be using this. There are a lot of other reasons. We can maybe talk about them because I actually, I think I um, written them down because I forget about it. But basically here, you know, it's hot swapping is one thing, takes care of API keys. So we're using the keys module. It is as good of a pattern as you can get. It can still, still be saved in configuration by mistake, but you know, it is at least making sure that people think, think about it. It also makes sure that there is always a consistent place. So I will show you. It's always under configuration, AI setting, provider settings, and there's these different configuration where you can just set a key. So it's just one place, not that every person that makes a contributed module wants to set their own form. Uh, and this is not calling anyone out. I do the same thing with AI uh, interpolator, right? Um, it also triggers event. So it makes sure that every call uh, that is done via this is triggering event, which means that we can have stuff like, um, I will show you, we can have, for instance, a logging module that can log prompts. and. These prompts are getting tagged by like, um, you can manually tag each of the queries. So this is just a parameter I can show you here. You can just add a third one and do my image call. So when, uh, when you're uh, triggering the event, you can look for my image call, for instance, if you want to do something specific before it sends it or after it sends it. Uh, and this make sure that you can do stuff like moderation, you can use external moderation. So something we can do, uh, for instance, with uh, a very sensitive provider like Anthropic is that Anthropic doesn't have moderation themselves, but we can put OpenAI moderation in front of it. And this is triggered via the event system then. Um, so that's all that, but, uh, all right, so this takes care of logging. The logging also I'm gonna show at another time, you can replay your prompts, which means that if this is log, we're gonna have prompt explorers, I'm gonna showcase them at another time where you can actually see uh, the underlying prompt that some module does, because then you can uh, improve that uh, prompt because that's a problem with the AI interpolator is adding a lot of prompting around your prompts with asking for JSON and doing like a uh, few shot learning in many cases where it's giving examples. And if you want to really figure out what's going wrong and maybe you want to use some playground, then we have that playground where you can try any model, try any uh, provider and see the actual prompt that like it was done, right? Um, so, yeah. That's it. First video about AI. More videos to come. Thank you.